Distinguished guests and friends, I'm delighted that the Season Reader series has published in two volumes the most important documents of the Communist Party of the Philippines since its founding Congress on December 26, 1968. I thank the International Network for Philippine Studies for accomplishing this. The NDFP International Information Office for organizing this book launch, the book reviewers, and all other participants. The CPP was re established in 1968 as a result of the desire of the Filipino people for revolutionary change of the chronically crisis stricken semi colonial and semi feudal ruling system, and also as a result of the struggle against revisionism and the old Communist Party and in the now collapsed Soviet Union. Since then, the CPP has served as the advanced detachment of the proletariat and has brilliantly and successfully led the Philippine Revolution under the guidance of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism. The CPP has applied the universal theory of the proletariat on the history and concrete conditions of the Philippines defined the character of Philippine society and set forth the general line of people's democratic revolution with a socialist perspective. It has integrated the protracted people's war with the agrarian revolution and the nationally united front. It has adopted democratic centralism as its organizational principle. The CP started from scratch with only with a few scores of cadres from the mass organizations of workers, peasants, and youth amounting to some 50,000. Three months thereafter, on March 29, 1969, we were able to establish the New People's Army after we united with the proletarian revolutionaries in the Old People's Army after they broke away from the Taruk Sumulong gangster clique. We started with only nine automatic rifles and 26 inferior firearms, and with a peasant mass base of 80,000 in the second district of Tarlac in early 1969. Now the CPP has more than 150,000 members. The New People's Army has thousands of red fighters with automatic rifles and operates in more than 110 guerrilla fronts nationwide. It is augmented by tens of thousands of members of the People's Militia and Self-Defense Units of the revolutionary mass organizations. Within the frame of the NDFP, the revolutionary mass organizations and local alliances have millions of members. The local organs of political power, which constitute the People's Democratic Government, encompass both the organized and unorganized masses in more than 90% of the Philippine provinces. The enemy, the renegades, and other detractors of the revolution say that 53 years of revolutionary struggle have passed, and yet the presidential palace in Manila is still held by the reactionaries. But the People's Democratic Government is built widely in the countryside and aims to advance wave upon wave towards the urban areas. The great victories of the CPP have been achieved self-reliantly through the revolutionary dedication, hard work, sacrifices, and fierce struggles by the cadres and members of the CPP, the Red Commanders and Fighters, and the broad masses of the people in an archipelagic country without the benefit of cross-border advantages and with the revisionist betrayal of socialism at first restoring capitalism in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe and then defeating the great proletarian cultural revolution and restoring capitalism in China. Out of fear that the CPP and the NPA would rapidly become far stronger than it was, the U.S. decided to junk its puppet Marcos after he ordered the killing of his political rival Benigno Aquino in 1983. The legal, patriotic, and democratic forces and anti-Marcos conservative forces coalesced to fight the fascist regime. It was in 1984 that the U.S. Um, recognized the growing strength of the revolutionary movement and decided to junk Marcos. 
In 1986, President Corazon Aquino negotiated a ceasefire agreement with the National Democratic Front of the Philippines, but broke this agreement with the Mendiola massacre in January 1987. In 1992, the Ramos regime sought to engage the revolutionary movement in peace negotiations with the NDFP. More than 10 major agreements were made, but every post-Marcos regime has tried to use the peace negotiations as a mere device for surveillance and intelligence, sowing political intrigue and seeking the capitulation of the revolutionary forces. The worst of the post-Marcos regime is that of Duterte, who has terminated the peace negotiations and scrapped all the agreements so far made and has vowed to destroy the armed revolution before the end of his term in 2022. He will surely fail because his grave crimes of treason, state terrorism, plunder, and misuse of public resources, and the persistence of foreign monopoly capitalism, domestic feudalism, and bureaucrat capitalism, and the rapid worsening of the crisis of the Philippine ruling system and the world capitalist system provide the favorable conditions for the continuing rise of the armed revolution. The Filipino people and the revolutionary forces can be expected to fight more fiercely than ever before against the Duterte terror regime and the entire ruling system when Duterte rigs the elections this year as Marcos did in 1986. They are now far stronger and more tested in struggle than in earlier decades. They are more than ever prepared to wage a resolute and relentless struggle because the chronic crisis of the ruling system is rapidly worsening. They are more desirous than ever for revolutionary change and the CPP and other revolutionary forces are stronger than ever before. It is to the outstanding great credit of the CPP that it is one of the proletarian revolutionary parties of the world successfully leading the People's Democratic Revolution. It is widely recognized as a torchbearer of the world proletarian socialist revolution, whose resurgence is being ushered in by the anti-imperialist and democratic mass struggles all over the world and by the intensification of all major contradictions between labor and capital, between the imperialist powers and the oppressed peoples and nations, among the imperialist powers themselves and the U.S. and China as the chief imperialist rivals. Thank you.